stocks and bonds. We talked about how this one can be a little bit tricky when you're tracking your your uh, information with just the bank feeds. Because remember that the stocks and bonds could go up and down as you as you get cash flow, meaning income from revenue and interest. Uh, and when you purchase and sell the stocks and bonds, but most of the time people also want to track their stocks and bonds on a market value basis, given the fact that they're publicly traded and you know what the market value is. And therefore you have to uh, to do that, you'll have to do periodic adjustments to it. Also, just remember that investments like stocks and bonds should not generally be if you're in a sole proprietorship business, for example, on your business side of things, unless it's a short term investment that you're going to use for whatever your business is, or your business is the business of investing in stocks and bonds. Because uh, what it should have then instead is is we separate the personal and the business. This business, for example, is not in the business of stock and bond investment, but in gig work or whatever. So I wouldn't want my stocks and bonds here. Instead, when I get my money, I want to transfer it uh, through a draw to myself and then invest personally in stocks and bonds, giving me that separation between what my business objective is here specifically and my personal objective. You could do that, by the way, with one zero account trying to break out your income statement between business and professional if you wanted to do that. Uh, sometimes it's not recommended because it could be easier to mingle things up that way. But if you have a small Schedule C business, that might work. Now, inventory uh, is generated here, noting that inventory is another one of those things that will often muddy up being able to construct our financial statements simply from the bank feeds. Because when we have inventory, we typically have to do an accrual type of thing. So we talked about different ways that we might deal with inventory. You might deal with it by a, per, by a periodic inventory system, tracking the units of inventory outside of the zero system, or you might track it perpetually in the system and think about how your bank feeds will fit into that process. Uh, Primerica Investment, this is another investment account that we had grouped. This is another investment account. So then we have the fixed assets. Uh, the fixed assets uh, are another kind of a little bit tricky with the bank feeds. So we just have to make sure that when we're purchasing fixed assets, that we are that we are going to be able to pick up the fact that the fixed assets are going to be uh, higher dollar amount items usually. So that's one way we can kind of see whether or not we're paying for something that's going to be expensed or whether we have to put it on the books as a fixed asset. The fixed assets can be a little bit tricky because they're not day-to-day -day transactions. We don't buy equipment all the time. We don't buy buildings all the time. Uh, and so because that they don't happen all the time, when they do come up, they might, they're a little bit unusual of a transaction that we might have to kind of think about a little bit more uh, closely. There are also transactions we often finance, meaning we take a loan out for them possibly. And there are transactions where we have to once again deviate from the cash-based method to an accrual-based method because in the